Hello, welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner, classic slash non-classics. Please excuse my wall base, my papers on my wall basically fly out. I have a fan in here, and it's really hot in my house. I forgot to mention my last video, okay? Uh, this is, uh, welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner, classic slash non-classic. This is episode 149, Double Shot 84, okay? First up, it's Amazing Spider-Man, Edge of the Spider-Verse. Collects the entire five issue mini series. Um, this is actually issue two, which is the view of Spider Gwen. Uh, in her reality, she survived, Peter died, and she got bitten by the reactor spider. Simple as that. A lot of people probably know that. The first issue is a return of Spider Man Noir for the first time since um, uh, Spider Man Noir Eyes Without Face. The third issue is, if I can find it here, and by the way, the same creative team who did uh, this one shot also did, who, who, who they also did the, the current Spider current went on one series. Um, the third issue is about a Japanese version of Spider Man, who's not called Peter Parker. Apparently, he's this wealthy scientist type of thing who was a consultant with the police department, and he wears his, his outfit is very odd. It's, it kind of looks like Spider-Man, but this issue means nothing overall to, to the overall Spider-Verse event. It's a good issue to read. It's very interesting. I would have liked to see this issue a little bit more explored before it just abruptly ended. This issue came out during Halloween. This is by far, issue 4 is the darkest issue of the entire series. And by the way, like the previous issue, it has no raw impact on Spider-Verse. And it's a classic... Uh, it's, it's, it's a homage to classic uh, horror covers from the 50s. Simply put, Peter Parker, and um, his uncle is not Uncle Ben, it's Uncle Ted, and Mary Jane is called Sarah Jane. Now, he, he, he's, he, he is evil. And when he, gets, when he gets bitten by the spider, his actual spider is really huge. And he starts to try to eat people. He eats a lot of things. He acts like an actual spider. And eventually, Morlin kills him. Sorry, I think it books me up over a year. And the last issue was actually pretty good. Actually, kind of like this one. Even though she didn't overall do all that much in Spider Verse, it's called Spider. Uh, yeah, it's just another Japanese type character who's who she is, the daughter of Peter Parker in this reality. Her father is Peter Parker, but it's a really, really interesting series. It really issue. It's a really good issue. It's actually the first really good one uh, since. Um, uh, issue three, issue four is kind of the weakest issue in this entire series, but overall, these are just five one-shot issues. Read them as you will, but this is great. I definitely recommend you probably get this if you're going if you're going to get the Spider Verse trades. And also, if you're fan of uh, the Spider Gwen, I reckon you can get the trade or get the individual issue she debuts in. Overall, I'll get this book an 8.5 out of 10. It's not bad. Next up, the final trade. Of Wolverine the X-Men. Wolverine the X-Men, Volume 2, Death Wolverine. Written by Jason Latour, the guy who, who co-created Spider-Web. Now there are two stories in this book, actually three. The first one is a three-parter which follows up the previous arc of, of this particular series, uh, dealing with the final appearances, the final appearance, final time Wolverine appears in this issue. Basically, like there's an issue where Wolverine takes Storm to the world, um, it just deals with the aftermath effects of the first six issues of this 12 issue point. It's a really good three parter. Okay? Next comes a two parter, which is basically dealing with the aftermath of Wolverine's death. And basically also, also helps setting up the Spider Man the X Men series. It's a really good two parter. Last but not least is the Axis Time. Issue 12, the final issue of the series before it gets relaunched. As far as the X, it really doesn't really overall affect access. It simply puts Storm is acting really crazy because she's um, she, she's evil. Uh, first, she rakes. I mean, a lot of people probably mentioned this already. She makes out with some random guy in a bar, and then his girlfriend shows up, uh, asking what the heck is going on, and then she slaps her, slaps the girlfriend, and then she makes out with her. It's just because she feels like it. Also, Quinta Quintyra shows up in the issue, and and when she gets restored back normal, this is of course just after 
issue. I would say this issue takes place just during issue issue nine of Access. Um, it's an okay tie-in, but overall, of all the tie-ins for Access, it's actually the weakest tie-in. But it's the most fun one. It's the most interesting one to read. One of the most in it, it's a good read overall. But most of this book is still really good. I give this book a nine out of ten. I definitely recommend, it, especially for for Wolverine fan. This is this is probably one of your very few chances to pick up some some issues of Wolverine X. This is the last trade because as of right now, this series has ended after 54 issues overall and one annual. That's how long the series lasted for. 42 issues and annual for the first time. And this 12 issue one overall that makes 54 issues. This was a good series read by two fantastic writers. I definitely recommend pick up every single trade. Overall, there have been 10 trades overall to collect the entire series and 54 issues overall. 9 out of 10. Alright, that's it. Stay tuned for my next episode, which is my 150th episode of the series. Uh, I'll decide what I'm doing then. Otherwise, though, see you then when it comes to that. It'll be a double shock. It, it, it'll be able to me what exactly what I'm going to do for the episode, okay? Alright, see you there. Bye.